All right, you were yelling at me that I'm more fun when I drink. You know, I was having this thought a lot because it's like I, <laughs> I have a couple <laughs> friends who become sober, uh-huh. and it's the most selfish thing in the world. Where you're like, you're happy your friends, you're happy that they're sober, but you do like you're like there were like two parties where they were great, man. And <laughs> yeah, no, I had it. my moments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this I w- is how we should do the pod from now on: is just start an argument while we're like setting up the mics. I had that thought too that we need to have some sort of feud to drive some the more podcast. conflict. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, drama is all about conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, people want to hear us bitchily arguing with each other. My conflict is going to be spritzing liquor in your face. Spritzing liquor in and my asking face. asking if you miss it. <laughs> Nick, I miss it so much. You, you miss it so you, yeah. should ha- you should let loose a little bit. You don't have I was to- just... I was just thinking, because it's coming up on three years. It's going to be yeah. three years in January. So I was thinking about putting it to a vote. Yeah, you should... Brendan, just like on Facebook, just, like where my mom can see it. <laughs> just drink in moderation. <laughs> you know, that's a very simple solution <laughs> that's never once about occurred it? to me. You know, no, I've never, uh, that's never occurred to me. Did you think about drinking a little bit and not a lot? Fuck, when that's you a go great out to, idea. When you go out to drink, tell the bartender to say, I'm not going to have a lot. <laughs> say, just give me a little bit, I don't want mm-hmm. a lot of this. Yeah. Uh, go up and say, uh, g- what is a reasonable amount of dr- to drink? Thanks. And the bartender pours it out <laughs> all at once. Yeah. And I say, thank you, I will now drink this over many hours. That's what you have to do, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put alcohol and Tylenol cups for you and hide them around the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> but so I can only drink as much as I can find. Well, there will only be a, probably a, the equivalent of like two drinks. Because it'll be beer. You're going to be doing shots of beer out of Tylenol cups. Mm-hmm. So you'll it'll be just enough for you to be fun, but also just enough that you're like furiously looking for it. <laughs> yeah, that I am searching. I'm not engaging with anyone. I'm not talking to anyone. <laughs> like, it's your, I'm just silently on a little hunt throughout the party. <laughs> you're looking for little Easter eggs. <laughs> I'll give you a basket with the shiny grass in it. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone likes shiny grass. <laughs> Whatever it's called. <laughs> I don't know. I, man, that seems right. I'm so weird. I've been listening to a... I've been listening... I have a record player again. It's like my one vice. So I've been listening to a lot of music. That is not your one vice. What the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? It's my one your vice. Your vice is acid. Nah, no, You no, are no, addicted no. to it no, again. It <laughs> no, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm not... I'm not <laughs> Nick, <laughs> you... Okay, you took like the... <laughs> you took it the first time. And I, <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, how was it? You're like, bad. I didn't like it. I'm not going to do the rest of it and, and I, yes. then I saw you a week later and you're like ah, I did the rest I of it the rest but of I'm not going to buy more I'm like Nick you're totally going to buy more I'm not going to buy more and then a couple days later we were with some other friends you're like yeah I'd love to do acid with you guys sometime. well I do, if I do it with people it's not as bad <laughs> oh it doesn't count <laughs> it doesn't count if you do it with people <laughs> yeah your brain can tell the difference and absorbs less damage when yes. you're with people <laughs> it can't when you, listen <laughs> When you're spiritually unlocked like me, you understand mm-hmm. that there is a difference. You're right. I'm yeah. all locked. I'm you're locked completely up. locked spiritually. You're bound by your earthly desires. Dude. It's true. I'm a damn machine. You're, just, a, you're a machine. Yeah. I'm an animal. I'm you know? communing with the plants. Yeah. I have the level of consciousness of, say, an earthworm, where it's just like a base impulse to continue, but <laughs> not any more focused than that. And me? I'm, just, <laughs> I'm the star child. It's true. I fully am. Mm-hmm. I, I, but I've been listening, man. I don't. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> something about just like your body language in that moment, just like very like forward and open, but aggressive, and it's like very unique. But I trust it. It's this is what this is how you become alpha once you're spiritually. Awake. Yeah, this is an inspired man. Oh my god, dude. Mm-hmm. But just I fucking <laughs> I, squared off on the other side of this. <laughs> Shitty table. Don't attack my beliefs. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to attack your beliefs. I want to make you drink. I know you will. And it's, <laughs> it's going to be bad. Be really it's not going to go how you think. It Not for you, but for me, it will be a blast. What are the you, upsides you for know, you? I don't well, see how... The, the, main is upside is, the main upside is I don't live with you anymore, so when you have a bad next day, I just get to be at my own house. That's true. So I just get to be with you while you're fun doing making fun Brendan mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and then I don't have to see you for like another week. What what fun Brendan mistakes do you see? I don't could happen. I'm, I, I'm trying to think back when I did drink, what were my big mistakes? It'd be like uh drunkenly commenting on an ass in like a public setting. Uh, like to the woman? Yeah. Like I did that once. Whoa. How did uh, that go? Um well I thought I was being nice. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, my 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 friend uh, Kelly, she had made a comment to me about a, a different friend of ours whose whose name I won't mention because I realize this whole story is about her ass. <laughs> but, uh, and Kelly was like, "Yeah, uh, you know that person is is uh, self conscious about her ass," and that just kind of stuck with me as like, "Oh, that's sad that my friend isn't confident <laughs> oh about her God. ass." <laughs> so then later I was like, <laughs> I was extremely drunk and I thought like. 
oh, it's so sad that my friend is self-conscious about this feature that's good. I should definitely vocalize this to make her feel better. And the moment I did it, everyone was just like, ah, come on. Like, not even her, just everyone else was like, damn it. <laughs> we have to get you drinking again. No, because <laughs> I just, was that not enough to convince you? These, I mean, if they're just like, they're mistakes. Even if I was like blackout drunk, these are mistakes that I don't understand. <laughs> I guess yeah, I see well, it. I get, I get so much drunker than you. <laughs> and my brain just melts inside my skull. It's I, just every every synapse misfires completely. We should get you really drunk, and I do like four hits of acid because mm-hmm. that's a great combo. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure that, I'm sure that we'll be on the same level. <laughs> Probably, about, yeah. Right? Um, I yeah. I don't know. I I have a feeling. I think that to me, the level of drunk that I enjoy is just alcohol poisoning. Because every time I talk, I'm like, you know when you get so drunk you hallucinate? And everyone's like, no. What? <laughs> I don't know about that either. Oh, you've you never could like... You just do you, acid, Brendan. Yeah, you could. Or you could get so drunk that you pass out momentarily and when you wake up, you think your house is a spaceship and you're in space. So you mean like you hallucinate or you're just disoriented? Uh, I think it's that my brain is trying to shut down. Cause my, I think my brain knows like, oh, I need to be asleep it's, now, but I'm still awake. So I'm like in a waking dream where I'm also fucking hammered. It's like when you take Ambien and do like Coke or an amphetamine where like your brain is trying to go to sleep, but you're still awake. So maybe. I actually do know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Maybe I've created those circumstances within me just with madness. That sucks, dude. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, you actually, yeah. you're right. It is good. I'm going to make mm-hmm. you drink again. Yeah. Oh my God. You just got me. You got me turned all around. Dude. I might be on board now. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, cause I was, I was writing so many great bits, you know, I was so confident on stage. I, yeah. could, I, I could riff so well. It was this true or this is not true? No, this is true. Yeah. Um, like, I remember uh, one of the last times that I drank, it was New Year's Eve, and uh, I was at this, so for some reason there was an open mic that was not canceled on New Year's Eve. What a horrible idea, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I went up, and they gave me 15 minutes, and I was, I was apparently so drunk that I just did my tight five over 15 minutes. It took me because I, I just like couldn't talk, but I was like murdering, like completely really? murdering. But everyone's like, I was like, oh, did I like go out off on a bunch of tangents? They're like, not really. It just like took you a long time, but it was really good. It was very good. You know what? I've noticed <laughs> I'll drink too because like I'll realize like bits that are usually two minutes I can get to five because you're just more present. You're slowing you're more down. more present. Yeah, you're like engaged. Audiences uh, love a damn pause, dude. Yeah. It took me a long time to They love that. a damn pause. They love when you pause between the setup and the damn punchline. Mm-hmm. It's not, I can't, it's especially, one of those, yeah, you know, they like tension. It's in a way. literally something that I just learned like six months ago, and I'm just like, I'm so fucking retarded. Dude. <laughs> I literally was like, I just say the words in the sequence that I wrote them, and people understand that it's funny because I wrote funny words. And it's like, what are you, what? no, no, you got to pause. You have to act like you're there. You pause before the punchline, you pause after the punchline. I'm so bad at comedy. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. You just like, uh, you, you kind of took a break for a while. I keep doing and that. And you're shaking the dust off. I know. I, I, I was going to, I got to do it more. I did it once this week. I got to do it some more. Yeah, I got to do it some more. I had a show last night, though. That was How'd fun. that go? It went well. It was fun to be on a show again. Yeah. You know? And Where nobody was it? Was it in Orange County? Uh, it was, yeah, it was in Orange County. And nice. none of the... Because I, I, I just moved here. Of course, you know this, but just for context for the listener, I just moved here six months ago. And when you move to a new scene, unless you have a lot of heat, no one gives a shit that you're there. No and they're just like, oh, look at that man who's never done comedy before. I will treat him like he's nothing. Uh, but it was just good. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it right makes you work harder. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, that's good. But it was fun to be on a show again and realize, like, oh, none of these other comics know that I don't do shows normally. They're just treating me like I'm a man worthy of looking in the eyes. Nice. And respecting. And that is a nice feeling. I got that. I, I'm not going to say the comic's name, but there was a comic who I was, like, a real big fan of, and I did a show with her at the Virgil mm-hmm. and, like, had a good set. And she like she came on. She was like, "That was really funny." And I was like, F- I, was, "I was like, I thought you were mean." I didn't say that, but in my head, like she like I there are like, so many people here who are just mean. Or you, I mean, I'd like actually seen her like be kind of, which of course, like when you have as much heat as she does, and like a lot of people are just like trying to like bother you. Uh oh, mm-hmm. are we not picking up on the mic? No, I think we're fine. Yeah, uh, I can hear myself. Yeah, we were just being quiet. Um, so it's you know it's it's in the green. It's not in the yellow. Oh, but I think we, that's fine. We're leaving that in. Um, <laughs> it's uh, so we're so real on this podcast, but yeah, that was no, it's, three seconds. <laughs> it's nice because like, uh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Leave it in. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Oh, we're leaving it in. We're leaving it in. Baby. Go on with your story. No, it is not because it was <laughs> like it, it was like I got to uh, you know I feel like Cinderella at the ball. Nobody knew that I was a peasant. Nobody I know, knew right? That I was a disgusting. Yeah, no one can tell the difference. Yeah, it's it was great. Nice. Yeah, that, I mean that's the thing about comedies. You can basically just like lie about what you're worth because really no. I mean people can tell, but they have to care enough to investigate, right? Which no one does. Yeah, not so you start flooding the internet with your bad podcast. <laughs> we're doing ourselves in, dude. <laughs> no, I don't think any like LA comics listen to this, which is good. I think it's just like uh, internet people, good. which is what we want. That's what we want. Yeah, we don't want our fucking peers listening <laughs> and knowing our I truly, personalities. I truly do not. <laughs> it it could be bad. It could be really bad. I had a man. I was listening to. Uh, I'm listening to all the music again. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. I'm just coming to really dark realizations about <laughs> myself. Talk a little bit closer. Yeah. I, let me lift the mic. Is the mic? Mm-hmm. How do I get it to stay? Is that tightening it? Uh, yeah. Turn Righty your, tighty. Turn your audio up. <laughs> for all these. Do you need to? You hear it better? No, 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 no. I'm telling them to come. I'm sure they, oh, got yeah. a, they got a bunch of fucking noises in yeah, there. Yeah, if, you, if you're listening to this in your car, what your job is, is when I talk, you turn the volume of your car down. And when Nick talks, you turn it up. You gotta crank it up. Yeah, you gotta crank it up way high. And you should be focusing on this as much as you are the road. Eh, if not more. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh... Oh, no, yeah, no, you it, know, it, it you should, should really, be more. You should really be pulling over to the side of the road to listen to this podcast. Yeah, you should be, you, I, <laughs> I'm not doing this. <laughs> um, <laughs> if now you you're listen, driving. Do you see a sign that says road closed ramp ahead? If Take it, that. If at any point you find yourself listening to Coward Hour, we encourage you to seek refuge. <laughs> we encourage you to find a bomb shelter. Listen mm-hmm. to it in a safe this and closed space. This shouldn't be listened to in r- a room with windows. Not at all. Mm-hmm. No, this is this is this is a, this is a podcast. Yeah. This is a you know Ted the room Kaczynski. in your house where you do things that you don't want the law to know about. Yeah. That's where you listen to this. This podcast, podcast is for manifesto rooms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for or, panic rooms. For panic rooms. <laughs> panic rooms. <laughs> it's for panic rooms, and it's for like where you keep the people who escape and, and sh- like make the news. And sheds in the woods. Sheds in the woods. Yeah, this is for Dorner huts. Yeah, and I'd like to clarify here, you know, because. Um, because, uh, you know, this is a, a virtuous podcast. When we say this is a place where you're doing bad things, these things aren't sexual. Not at all. No. In no way, shape, or form. You've kidnapped people to do terrible things to them that do not involve sex. No, you've kidnapped them to explain, <laughs> to show them your detailed 84-page outline of how we can do away with taxes completely. <laughs> the government doesn't need any amount of the money that I earn doing whatever it is that I do. <laughs> doing whatever it is that Nick does to earn his money. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, but to get before we figure it off. <laughs> Which right now is primarily letting the Japanese investigate your organs. Letting the Japanese... I think just I, look at them. Just, they're just taking a peek. Yeah. <laughs> You're not selling your organs, but they are allowed to play with them. They, yes, they're allowed to inspect... <laughs> I mean, they've they've taken some of my organs. They've taken components of my organs. They leave the organs in, but they like wait. What components of your organs? Just the liquid in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's like fine. That comes back, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's just like it's different piss that your body has. There's piss that comes out of your dick, and then there's <laughs> other slightly more important piss that's inside of a sponge in your spine. I came. Uh, speaking <laughs> of which, I had it was such a dark moment today. I had, this is two dark moments. I'll get to the other one, mm-hmm. but I. I was I was jacking off today. Ooh, don't do that. Yeah, I hate to admit that I do it, but I was jacking <laughs> off. It was this morning. I just like came into my belly button. I just let it, you know. Whatever. Oh, I do that. Uh, not hold on. I didn't leave it there. Yeah, certainly you don't. <laughs> but, but uh, anytime I I jack off immediately before a shower, mm-hmm. I come in my belly button because I just I like jack off on my back, and it just kind of falls there. It's not like I'm aiming. Right. Exactly. That's yeah. The, I, so I I, sh- I shoot for my I shoot in my belly button, and immediately two flies landed on it, and I was just like, "What the fuck does this?" <laughs> oh, mean? I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I gotta go outside." You got fucking stink lines I, I coming off your cum. Fucking, I was like, "I'm fucking canceled for this, dude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that happens, and you just check online, and people know. People know what happened, but. 
But yeah, but I was listening to, tangentially related to my horniness. I keep there's this band that I guess is in it. They're called Soccer Mommy. Oh, it's, this is my mm-hmm. downfall for sure. Yeah, yeah. They released. Uh, they I've been listening to this cover they did of Bruce Springsteen's "I'm on Fire," mm-hmm. which you know that's it's very. It's yeah. one of, Bruce Springsteen has all these. I songs. think we we sang it uh, at a karaoke night and no one listened. No, that was uh, "Dancing in the Dark." Oh, okay. Um, but Bruce Springsteen has all of these songs. We're so gay. Bruce Springsteen has all of these <laughs> songs. For me, Hear that dad's. Bruce Springsteen is gay. For me to even correct you was the gayest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Second to singing it with you. It mm-hmm. Earnestly in a yeah. ca- Koreatown karaoke joint. Yeah, um, to but- just like... <laughs> all of our blacked out friends who just wanted to scream about their dicks. Yeah. But Bruce Springsteen, he has all these songs like Born in the USA and I'm on Fire that are actually like very dark, but they're, mm-hmm. they're just, they're played like, like, like yes. you hear them at like barbecues and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I'm on Fire is this really sinister song about like a rapist. And so, but now it's being sung by like this, like, y- like girl in her early twenties, and it just it sounds like always. But, and, <laughs> and I've just like, all right, I, just, I, I, I got you. I'm just like listening to this sinister woman, and I've never been hornier. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Did, you really, you want to be attacked by a woman? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna be one of the, <laughs> like be soften that riff. Right as it came out of my mouth. No, I want to be. I'll, I like it, what it is is like a woman that could potentially murder me. There's a part. There, the part of me is like, right, ooh, this is familiar. Let's see what's going. On. It's not even that. It's, no, because because I don't want. <laughs> I, don't, like, oh, I remember this. I don't. I don't think about the end result. I just think about like the like the sinister. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I realize what's gonna happen to me is I'm definitely gonna be like one of those. Like, I'm going to be like that uh, guy who let that cannibal in Japan eat him. I'm just going to have, like, a woman's going to murder me, but it will have been consensual. Yeah, like, yeah. I will have paid You'll have for signed, it. like, she will go to jail for it, but the DA is going to have to fight that case. Right. My, my will will explicitly say, please be nice to my sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> my sweetie who murdered me. <laughs> yeah. Like, it. there's going to be, like... It, there could be an entire season of like Better Call Saul dedicated to the case of like getting that girl in jail. Because every time they're going to be like, we got her. Then suddenly her defense lawyer is going to be like, but I bring this witness to the stand and it's me. And I'm like, Nick wanted to die. Wanted and they're like, fuck. So <laughs> Nick wanted to die at the hands of a sinister woman. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But uh, it's really something. It's a something. large, powerful woman. I was like, I was like getting lost. This happens with so many things. Now. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, I, I, I should probably get a handle on this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to rewire my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so then you just jerk off to just like, you, you try to Google Pornhub for like just passionate, real couple. You just like want to watch people actually in love and be like, is there any part of my brain that can still find this hot? I Dear can't, God, I hope so. I, have, I can't. I've not even really been watching porn. I don't know. Oh, that's good. It is good. <laughs> you could take some cues. Yeah, yeah. Um, is this yeah. a? Please uh, don't ask me any questions that will make this more specific. No, not at all. But uh, do you ever like if you have a date lined up, you start, you like jack off to porn that's like of the genre of the girl that you met on Tinder? No, no. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> How can I not ask questions? You know, just like if she's a particular searchable kind of person, would you then search for that sort of porn like in preparation for the date? No, I you know what's fun? I don't do the I don't do the especially now that I'm trying to like I don't want to have sex mm-hmm. on the first date anymore. It doesn't like that really yeah, me is starting to feel bad. I mean, here's the thing is I know and really that's how I've always felt. It's like I I know I know deep down I don't enjoy stranger sex. I know I don't like it. Right. I know that it ruins the potential for whatever comes afterward to be good or strong. Yeah. Some, but I, yeah. but any time it is a possibility to have sex, I have no power to stop myself from pursuing it at all costs. I do. I don't know the weird thing because I guess like the whole thing is people tell you, oh, you want to, you know, it's like the thing from something about Mary or whatever. You take the edge off, right? That's why you jack off. You before jack the, off before a date. so that you're not like making crazy decisions. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like I make, <laughs> it's well, it's the I opposite of no fat. It is the opposite <laughs> of no fat. Yeah. See, so these men are draining their power before they go out on these dates. I just don't because I think that like if I d- if I don't have some of that energy. It's almost like I become like deflated and pessimistic throughout the date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You want to maybe come like exactly twenty four hours before the date. Do, okay. Do you really? I think so. That felt right. 
like maybe uh, that out there so confident. Like maybe like say you have a date at night. Yeah. Maybe wake up a half hour early and jack off before you go to work. So then <laughs> by the time it's like <laughs> you know your face right now, you're not on board. <laughs> the politics of jacking off is blowing my mind, dude. <laughs> the polit explain your use of the word politics. I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> I don't, isn't that the politics of something when you, <laughs> when there's, <laughs> when it's complicated? Do you think politics just means details? <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of, doesn't it? <laughs> I think, I, I think that I is kind of what it means. To me, pol the politics of jacking off would be like, if, <laughs> if I had other, like say you, if I had other of my boys involved in the decision making <laughs> going into me jacking off. Right. If you were trying to, you were, right. If, if you were. Yeah. <laughs> like if I was gonna jack off and, and you I had to a like bipartisan approach to yeah, jacking off. Like if I was about to jack off and I had to send like a certain coded emoji to the group DM and then enough boys had to send back a thumbs up and then I'm allowed to jack off, that would be the politics of jacking off. But there's also like politics means uh God, I don't know. I know so many words, and I don't know what they mean. <laughs> I can't tell you how many words I throw out mm -hmm. that I'm like guessing and it's oh, just no. like I do that too sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's the best. There's nothing better than when you get away with it. When yeah. you when you when you throw a word out and and, and no one like, questions right after you say it, you've got that like the, the, like the it's scared almost like, moment. Yeah, I mean, real life kind of has the same rules as Scrabble, Absolutely. where in order for someone to call you out, they have to themselves be very no sure. Word. Because otherwise they lose a turn or something. There's nothing better than throwing a word out and just getting like confident nods from everyone. You're just like, mm -hmm. holy fuck, dude. Can you think of a word that you've done this with recently? No, man, but it'll happen later tonight probably. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, there is like that. I got called on it once <clears throat> by this comic in uh, Maryland, Ruth Rasby. I threw out the word, uh, I threw out the word brevity. <laughs> I did not, <laughs> did not know what brevity means. <laughs> I mean, I, I do now. Like, you, <laughs> you know, it's the soul of wit. <laughs> right. But uh, past that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I threw out brevity and just like in a con and like the conversation and like I kind of got away with it because like the conversation kept going and then Ruth Rasby was like, "Stop, stop, stop! What, what do you mean brevity?" <laughs> she's like, she's like, "How do you mean that word?" And I was like, ah, "I was like, yeah, you know." And you just silently walk to your car and <laughs> like, I, I said, I said, "No, I was just good. We were just hanging out. It was good. It was, there was a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of brevity." <laughs> Ah, I can feel the brevity in the air tonight. <laughs> yes, that is how I was using it. <laughs> I thought it meant like brotherly love. <laughs> Dude, I threw it out like it meant brotherly love. She was like, she's like, what? So like, what? Like people were saying. You thought things. it meant like fellowship or camaraderie? Like, yes, absolutely. That is one hundred percent how I was using it. Damn, so bad. <laughs> she was like, when you say brevity, what do you mean? She's like, you mean that everyone's speaking really quickly? <laughs> I was like, ah. I was like, nah. It's just like it's a good energy there. <laughs> So, so she she offered you a still wrong interpretation that that was closer than what you actually thought. <laughs> Wait, does that I, not, what is what is that? No, you need to educate me. What does brevity mean? Brevity means like conciseness. Yeah, so that's what she. I think that's what she. The way that I used it, I think that was the closest she could have figured. Hold on, out. define conciseness because you just made a face like. No, I know what I know what conciseness is. Being concise, being being short to the point. Very, like, okay, yeah. We know we know. Okay, concision is that the. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta Here's stop <laughs> female concision in Africa. <laughs> I've, I've definitely thrown out concision a couple times, but only when I know they're when it's people not it as smart as me. <clears throat> you know, now that I, it's I, not, I, I don't felt very confident that word. concision is not a word because I've never once heard it in my entire life until right now. Concisity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it no, it's not. We it's, are so dumb. <laughs> we're so dumb, dude. Uh, it's not to. I don't think that she was also wrong. I think that what I said, like, was must have been. I think I was literally like, I was like, oh yeah, you know, sidebar is great, man. You're just there with all the comics. There's so much brevity. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Which, so like, if you were using it right, that's a very funny thing to, like, <laughs> praise about a social situation. Like, uh, me and my pals, all the brevity, and then it cuts to, like, <laughs> like <laughs> you and some guy just like, sup? And he's like, See you, man. So <laughs> You're I think, like, so good. <laughs> so I think that's why she was like, from that, which that is a crazy thing to say. So I think she was like, how how on earth could he possibly mean what he said? I think she was like, so what do you mean? Like, they like they speak quickly? Like, what, like, so it's not, and I don't What wanna... did you mean, Nick? I meant there was some brotherly love. <laughs> there, you know, there's a real kumbaya kind of feeling. <laughs> I don't know what to Love that you. kumbaya kind of feeling. Look, that was 19 years. No, I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I was stupid. 
I'm yeah. just throwing it out there. You really shouldn't be allowed to do comedy as young as as we started. Like, yeah. You're even younger than me, I think. Uh, How yeah. old were you? I started when I was like 17, 18. And it didn't matter mm-hmm. because I didn't get even remotely good till I was 22. And I think I, I don't think that it was experience because mm-hmm. I like... But you get prorated. Like I remember your, yes. you having a like very strong reputation at that time because it was like, what? wow, Nick's a baby and he can like competently stand on stage and get a laugh. Dude, why was I that sometimes like I'll get so embarrassed because in Baltimore more than DC, I was prorated where like people were just like, this is Nick Oldershuck. And it's it's embarrassing to even like think about. But then I got because that happened and because like when you're 18 to 22, you're just not, I like had such an ego. And that's why I that's why I was I was such an asshole to <laughs> everyone. And I just thought that it was like I had like the right to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was such a dickhead. And no, now definitely, I, I agree. It. Like, I remember, uh, like, I, I would be so mean to certain people. Mm-hmm. And then, do you ever do this? Like, you forget that you were super mean to someone, and then you go home and you see them, and you're like, oh, everyone was my buddy, and you just forget that you were, like, very cruel and yes. try to strike up a conversation? That happened uh, last time. I, went, I, like, connected with some people last time I went home, and I was like, how you been? And they're like, why are you acting like we're okay? <laughs> I was, dude, I was so ridiculously mean to people Mm -hmm. because I was like, I was like, oh, they get that I'm joking. And like literally no one ever gets it. No one ever gets it because especially like when you're just doing a bit all the time and like the only, the only person that gets it is you and your head being like, "Mm, I don't mean that. Why would I say something? I like had a conversation. (laughs) Why would I say my true beliefs? I have no identity. So no one can even know what I'm being ironic because I I am no one. Yeah. Basically like, like I remember like someone got really offended at something. I don't remember what it was. And they were like, why the fuck would you say that? I was like, why would you think that I'm meant that sincerely and there was like because you said it yeah <laughs> like what are we supposed to how are we supposed to interpret the three levels that you're operating on yeah and then with comedy you're friends with people of all different ages where up until that point you've had no reason to ever like be friends with a 35 year old man so then you're just bullying an adult man dude. who's like what the fuck is <laughs> happening dude I, <laughs> I i would just shit on so many adults like to their faces which has to be a fucking thing to reckon with when like you've put that part of your life behind you yeah and then you're just getting bullied by fucking us because it's so nice to like i've even had this realization with my friends it's like all the high school dynamics have disappeared like i'm kind of able to be friends with everyone from my past now because like we're above that and if i Mm -hmm. was just like introduced to a new 20 year old every night who just like (laughs) made fun of the way that i looked (laughs) i would go crazy yeah because i mean as an adult no one really makes fun of your clothes Except in comedy. Yeah. Like, I've never once in my entire, like, in any workplace, has anyone ever made fun of the way that anyone else dresses or how they talk or anything about them. Mm -hmm. It's only, like, when you're working, like, a very blue-collar job, and then it's just, like, the other white guys want to be racist with you. Right. That's the only time that people are, like, bullying. And uh, I guess probably shouldn't call... uh, Racial bigotry, bullying. That's probably a little bit of a soft yeah, way of putting they're just it. Having a little but you fun. know, they're joshing around. They're you joshing know. around. Yeah, the 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 camaraderie of the work site. You it's know, locker room talk. <laughs> work site. Like I do construction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I worked in a warehouse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you know, I do that. I will again. <laughs> <laughs> Things soon. are going now. <laughs> Things are going pretty well now, but you just wait. I'm gonna get you on this medical study, John. But now, you know what? You know what the <laughs> craziest thing that happened because my room, my new roommate. Uh, from Baltimore is black and mm-hmm. so I like and there are all these black comics in Baltimore who I was always like really buddy buddy with and like felt like I could speak freely like Dark Mark Ivan Mark all these like really fun and Cameron was like she's like yeah you know the last time I was so, like after you left and I was just like with hanging out with all the black comics like Dark Mark Ivan we all had a conversation about how they're all sure that you're so racist <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a 10 minute conversation by these people who I thought like <laughs> you thought were your they, friends and they just like it just came up it was like do you guys think that Nick Oldershaw is actually racist and, I, and that is I'm like <laughs> so, I'm so <laughs> that has really fucked with me damn but you know I'm not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing about racism as a as a white man is if you say that you're not, people got to take you on your word. Dude, I remember when like the when the Baltimore uprising happened. I was with Dark Mark the night. <laughs> hold that on, it, hold on. The Baltimore uprising. I'm trying to I'm trying <laughs> to be that, good. Oh, are you trying to not say riot? Well, that's the way they recoded it. Was the Baltimore uprising? It wasn't a riot. Oh, is that actually for the f- PC term for it? Yeah. Uh, yeah it for- sounds worse. I mean, riot. Yeah. Isn't that part of being woke is you can say that, like, riots are justified? I thought that was part of the thing now is that, like, you see a guy, like, stealing a television and you're like, for justice. Oh, my God. <laughs> is this too much? Don't take me down this path. <laughs> 
I'm trying. I'm uprising. Just, look, that, Brendan, uprising. That sounds like a zombie horde. Brendan, stop. There was a conversation <laughs> in a in a in a room that I wasn't in that I know happened where for. At least 15 minutes, people contemplated whether or not I was a racist. 15 <laughs> minutes is so long. It's so long to have my name uttered and me, like, have no concept of it. Because they won't, she won't tell me even specifically what they said. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's a, there's just like, there's just this, this dark corner of the universe that definitely exists that I know nothing about. And it has everything to do with me. Damn. And it freaks me out so much. But the, but like, I also, I don't know, things would throw me all the time. Like, I was with Dark Mark the night that, like, the Baltimore Uprising happened. <laughs> And this and this is <laughs> uprising like, still sounds funny. Well, it sounds it, like the the subtitle it. of an action movie. Baltimore Uprising. <laughs> yeah. No, it was the Freddie Gray. The Freddie Gray thing was kind of fucked up. But uh, so like mm-hmm. so you know people were upset in the streets and like because I was hosting <laughs> my comedy show with Eric Glazer, Seppuku. Yeah, our cultural appropriation comedy show. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, not racist at all. Not racist at all. Mm-hmm. Um, as I, I say, as I just hid my sword. You hid your damn sword, <laughs> dude. <laughs> But, th- but so, and I was trying, this is like when I was good, cause like, uh, the Michael Brown thing had happened and I thought, I thought it was all like actually pretty fucked up. So like when this was happening, I was very eager to show like my good, my, how much of a good boy I was. Mm-hmm. I was a good boy. Yeah. And so I turned, a very good boy. I turned to dark Mark and I was like, man, this is so fucked up that like this is happening. He goes, man, what are you talking about? It's hard to be a cop. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like, didn't even know what to do. I was like, everything. I uh, yeah, <laughs> sure is. Damn, I feel like that voice wasn't racist because I'm sure that's what he sounds that's what like. Dark Mark sounds like. Yeah, but it doesn't help your case. Certainly, I don't <laughs> look. I was trying to be good, and then I got smacked down. Mm-hmm. Man, do, doing voices though is so fun. It is. Yeah, is this a this is a dangerous app? It's a dangerous <laughs> app. Just... There was um there was this show at uh Good Good in Philly. It, it's basically um it's a uh, shtick or treat. It, they just do shtick or treat, but um, they call it something else. Um, they call it Hackoween. And I so badly wanted to do my favorite bit ever, which is um, Richard Pryor talking about fucking dogs. And at the la- I think at the last minute, I was like, I probably shouldn't do this. And looking back on it, yeah, safe call, but damn, that would have been fun. Let's hear the bit. Oh, he has this bit. It's like not on a special or anything. <laughs> I heard it because, like, a record company put it on SoundCloud in, like, 2011 because they were releasing a box set. So they were just like, oh, this is unreleased material. Let's put up this bit. And Richard Pryor, it's just this bit. He's like, man, you ever fuck dogs? (laughs) It's hard to fuck a dog, Jack. (laughs) He he tells this story about, like, he's like, man, when I was was a a kid, I was in a gang called The Dudes. You to gag, you gotta fuck a dog. <laughs> like, it's just this insane bit about like getting initiated into this gang where you have to fuck a dog. And then the big kicker of the bit is that like the dog, it's like a, a like they get the dog drunk and it bites his ass and he goes home and his mom is stitching up his ass. And his mom's like, Oh, how'd you get this bite? And the dad walks in the room and sees a bite on his son's ass and knows. From his youth. He's like, oh, boy, you've been fucking them dogs. And it kills. It, it kills. Everyone in the 70s is like, ah, oh, we fuck dogs. Oh we God. all fucked dogs. Dude, there is a part of me that, like, because I don't even love, like, a lot of the way, like, it's hard to, like, go back and listen to old comedy and have it stand up. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I would love to see Richard Pryor just, like, wor- just, like, see material. Just, like, working stuff out. I'm sure it's insane. Oh, it's I'm so sure funny. it's amazing. I mean... Because I think he was a dude who lied a lot, but also, like, he also seems like the the kind of dude who would way misjudge what is relatable. Totally. That's how I feel about, like, that first Dave Chappelle special, which mm-hmm. is, in, it's like, it's a guy on stage telling not a single story that's true. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, because when I was younger, I think I just, like, took it at face value. And even the more absurd ones, like the baby and coming out of the vagina in the club or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when I was older, like, when not when I was older, when I was, like, 17, there was a part of me that's like, man, it, that's bullshit. Like, all these stories are fake. And now I just, like, appreciate the fact that he was doing this insane, absurdist thing <laughs> for, like, a fucking hour on, on Killing Him Softly. It's very bizarre. Yeah, that's yeah. That's special. I guess you can't really, like, if you want to be, like, a big comic, you can't really do that now because then people know who you are from because you're constantly doing podcasts and right. stuff. Where, like, Dave Chappelle's first special, that was the first time most people were exposed to him at all. So you yeah. you, you just take it, like, oh, the person on stage right now, that's who they are. But it is crazy when you go back and watch it, you're like, oh my, every single one of those stories is, like, 
very made up. Yeah, yeah. None, none of it happened, which is like, and in a way, I'm like, where do you get the confidence to mm-hmm. like do that? Yeah, and there was like a, a long time where I'm, I'm sure it wasn't just me, but like tons of people were like, oh, lying on stage is hack. You can't lie. And now I feel like it's almost like at a point where I'm like, please lie. Yeah, dude. Good storytelling, like what you learn, like it, you do have to, you got to lie. I mean, a big thing is also like blending two totally separate stories together. Blending two separate stories together. Just because a lot of Changing sto- the ending. Changing the ending, just because like a lot of stories are just, they just, like most stories that actually happen to you, even if they're good, they do just kind of like peter out. Like if you format them like a story, like there's not, it doesn't have like a three act structure. Yeah, yeah. So you have to like borrow and. Yeah, you have to create it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about this before. When like you tell a story on stage so many times, you forget how it happened and then you're like, just conversationally relating the story, and you're like, I think I'm lying to this friend. <laughs> that happens to me. That happened to me with my uh, my whole sandwiches thing that I wrote. Because like, I don't even know. Because I even when I did it at uh, UCB, mm-hmm. and the sandwiches thing. That's the story where you, what happened? I was I, I was dumping hundreds of sandwiches from. I was supposed to be giving free sandwich samples out for like a year and a half, and I was just like <laughs> dumping them in the back of my car and like burying them in a ditch in the woods because nobody wanted them. And my and my boss just like kept giving me he like gave me a raise. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> like, you're like, damn, Nick's getting rid of these sandwiches. No, he. Well, I mean, he, that's so stupid that that's part of their business model is giving away sandwiches. It's really stupid, and we were we were like, I calculated how much because like what I should have done is just told him like, hey Jerry, nobody wants these, but I also just like didn't want to put any. It, it was nice. I wanted to keep going out in the morning because I would just like dump them in my trunk and then like go home and like be on the computer for an hour. <laughs> um, no, I mean that's that's the greatest is like when your job involves leaving work. Yes, so good, dude. But because uh, yeah, like, I miss being a pizza boy, kind of. What what I should have said to him was nobody wants these, but instead what I did was I uh, just tossed what after a year and a half equated to roughly eighty four thousand dollars worth of product. <laughs> <laughs> But so the whole point is we've like adapted this into this. Sh- Tim H and I have like adapted this into this short that we're getting ready to shoot, and like I also had to change a few UCB. I genuinely don't actually know what happened anymore. <laughs> like the like I know what I there are some big things I know we changed, but there are little details where I'm just like, wait, wait a minute, is that? But who knows? Yeah, who knows? So when you say a ditch, this was a literal ditch, like. It was a there was a hole in the woods uh, off of the um, Baltimore and Apple <laughs> like Spike a trail. gulch. <laughs> yeah, it was like a gulch. So and you're just like over on top of a cliff throwing sandwiches. Mm-hmm. And, well, no, no, no. I was just not, I had them in like a thing, and I would just because what happened like initially. Uh, I could I guess I could sort of tell the story. I've told it on so many podcasts oh, okay. and like at UCB, but. So the just first like an abbreviated version. Yeah, I'll so. do an abbreviated version because at first I was just like throwing them in the dumpster behind Coles, which is like across from Jimmy John's. Mm-hmm. And literally after my first day, I like I put them in a trash bag and I just like tossed them. Um, and after my first, uh, wait, so you didn't even try to get rid of them? I'm sorry, the it was day. after my first day of throwing them out. I did it for I did try to get rid of them for a little. while. They told me how to like stack them in a. Jerry's like you got to stack them in a pyramid. <laughs> People won't want them unless you stack the sandwiches in a pyramid on the table. I'm like they these sandwiches taste like shit. Yeah, Jimmy John sucks. <laughs> but so yeah, so and anyway, I went back and the assistant manager Megan was like, Nick, Jerry's so happy that you're doing this because like we actually had to fire the last guy who was doing it because he was just throwing them in the dumpster behind Coles <laughs> <laughs> where I was throwing them. So I like when my shift was done, I went back, I had to get it out of the dumpster. And so then I started throwing them away in the trash cans at my house. Uh-huh. But like one morning we woke up and like the trash cans were knocked over and just like covered in lettuce, mayonnaise and raccoon blood. Because <laughs> like raccoons had gotten into the sandwiches. A raccoon ate so much that it burst. No, they were fighting. They were raccoons were fighting each other over the sandwiches. <laughs> so they were, like fighting and scratching each other and stuff. Damn. Um. And so then I just started like dumping them in. And in the winter, this was not a problem. I would just like dump them in the uh, the trunk of my Honda Accord, mm-hmm. and I would like show Josh Frohlinger. This is like in the original version of the script. It starts with me picking up Josh Frillinger because we were at a mic one night and Josh was like, "Hey man, can I get a ride home? I don't have a car." And I said, uh, "How much do smells bother you?" And he goes, "What do you mean?" And then I took him around to the back of my car and showed him eight hundred sample sandwiches <laughs> that were literally like my car literally like tilted a little bit like when I. Drove. <laughs> And so this is also when I was dating. So like I would let them pile up for like two or three weeks, and then I would because I was so paranoid about like throwing them away <laughs> like in the block is hot dude the block is hot dude <laughs> it's, i was so paranoid about throwing them away in the vicinity it's of Jimmy fucking John's. it's the end of goodfellas you're like looking through the blinds <laughs> on a helicopter i was doing that when i was doing yeah, never mind yeah i was I, I was i was peeking through some blinds when i had the house to myself <laughs> and I was, uh, <laughs> but um but so anyway uh 
Yeah, so, but this is also, I was dating someone in D.C., <clears throat> and so I was so paranoid about, like, throwing them away near Jimmy John's about, like, getting found out. I was like, well, I'll just drive them across state lines, <laughs> which, <laughs> and so, like, every, and the, the poor person I was dating. Yeah, because Jimmy John's, like, even if another Jimmy John's finds them, they aren't allowed to communicate across state lines. I think there was a phone number on the, the phone number to the Jimmy John's was, like, how we did. On every sandwich? Oh, yeah, you know it. So it was, oh, a, it was a big problem. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so, and then the poor person that I was dating in D.C., like, mm-hmm. I would just show up, uh, because we would, like, hang out on the weekend, I'd, like, stay there for a couple days, and we'd hang out on the weekends, and my s- car would just be full of sandwiches, and before we could start hanging out, I was just like, hey, can, give me a hand, and we would, like, <laughs> she would just help me throw away about five trash bags of rotten sandwiches, like, every, that was, like, b- <laughs> before we could start hanging out with each other. <laughs> That was the de- and that then, was how hanging out with Nick begins. And then it got to the point where her um, <laughs> her apartment, uh, her landlord got mad at her because there was no room in the trash can for other people's trash. It was just my damn sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I started dumping them in this hole that I found. This big, <laughs> big. I was riding on the bike trail one day and I saw a big beautiful hole. <laughs> One of the <laughs> nicest holes I've ever seen. I said, that's where my fucking sandwiches are going, dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started dumping them in the hole. And uh, <laughs> and then one day, like, after doing this for, like, a, a couple weeks, I went to... And also, I should mention, like, it's technically, like, a... Na- like, it's technically part of, like, park services. Like, this... It's, like, a preserved area, the mm-hmm. bike trail. So one day, I go to, like, make my little deposit of this, this uh, tub full of sandwiches that I have, and they're just all gone. <laughs> <laughs> they're complete without a trace. They're all gone. So like park services. Like how many do you think were in there at its peak? A few hundred at least. Because mm-hmm. these these were not full length sandwiches. These were little sandwiches that we cut into thirds. So it was probably like a hundred or a f- yeah no. Because I would make every day. I would make like f- it would end up being like thirty, and then I would do it five days a week, and then how many? So. <laughs> It was many, many. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a lot. It of was a few hundred sandwiches that were in that hole. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, "Well, if Park Rangers found this, the phone number's all they're on <laughs> the sandwiches. The phone number to the Jimmy John's I work at is on the sandwiches." <laughs> so I just uh, never went back to work. <laughs> no one did. They call you? No, I blocked the number. <laughs> 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 so you saw that and panicked and blocked the number. I was just like, I don't work at Jimmy John's anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. I surprised myself with a day off. <laughs> Man, I I miss when um I, I miss when you could just like get fired or quit a job and it meant nothing. <laughs> it means nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely no. nothing, dude. That was the whole like when I worked at Rosetta Stone, which I was making so much money. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even free when I was like eighteen. I was making so much money, and then Rosetta Stone shut down because it was a scam. But like, I literally worked my last day. My boss had quit. My boss. This is the job. I think I told you this. Where like I would just like um, set uh, three chairs together at the at the kiosk in the mall, and I would fall asleep. And my Israeli boss would come in and like take pictures of me sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but he wouldn't say he's so bad. No, you never told me this. Oh yeah, yeah. So he, I would, because I, I would be there for it would be like a fourteen hour shift, and I would spend maybe four of those hours at the kiosk. The rest of the time, I was just like in the mall, just like <laughs> eating food, <laughs> buying things for myself, and, <laughs> and getting paid in twenty eleven or twenty twelve, getting paid like eleven dollars an hour plus commission, mm-hmm. which was a lot. Which of you're money. not selling anything, but <laughs> no, I mean, if you sold one, that it was like seven hundred dollars, so you'd make decent commission. No, um, and honest, and like. I, I did, yeah, so I wouldn't be there. I would get really sleepy. I would stack all like the stools together. I would make a bed, and then I would just like fall asleep in the middle of the mall, <laughs> just like in my work. <laughs> like people, are, like just many people are walking by me, just like <laughs> sleeping in my work uniform. So my- you know, I thought when I moved here, I thought like, oh, Nick has become homeless. But <laughs> now I'm realizing Nick has always been homeless, was, at least in his own mind. I was developing the skills. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was preparing myself. Yeah, those grifters instincts. <laughs> for the hard road ahead. <laughs> so my, but my boss, he was this Israeli guy, Moti. He was so passive aggressive. He would come in. He would see me sleeping. He wouldn't say anything to me then. He would take pictures of me. He would leave. And then as I was closing that day, he would send me text messages of like photos of me sleeping <laughs> and he'd be like nick you really cannot do this and i was like i of course i can do this yeah and he couldn't fire me because if he fired me he would have to work seven days a week 14 hours a day <laughs> i couldn't find anyone better dude i was fucking i was locked in yeah that's, that's but, a good deal yeah. my my boss um in philly 
he would uh he would look up the security cameras and he would pull up of of a feed of me looking at my phone and then he would take a picture of it and text it to my phone <laughs> So I would just be sitting there looking at my phone and then just an image of me looking at my phone <laughs> through a security camera would show up and then I would just like put my phone away for a little while. For a little while. <laughs> for like, yeah. Dude, it was so funny. I found a way to bypass uh, the, uh, I figured out how to get unlocked because there were all these like iPads and stuff like for people like practice Rosetta mm-hmm. Stone and I figured out a way to like get past, like unlock it so I could just like use the iPad and I was just like having things like delivered to my house <laughs> like while <laughs> I was working. I used it. I literally used it one time to order a pizza to the mall to myself. <laughs> and I, but I would just like leave my fingerprints all over it. So Moti would just be like, he would be like, I know that you're using the iPads to to buy things. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't. He could not fire me because that would have meant that his life would become hell, total hell, dude. <laughs> that rules. It was so good. <laughs> and and then yeah, like so when they went under. Um, we got a new manager, Robert, and, uh, like, I had worked my final day, and he's like, hey, can you help me break down uh, the kiosk? Like, we're going to have to be here from the time the mall closes, probably till about, like, 4 a.m., because I had to, like, literally, like, break it down and remove it and, like, carry everything. And I was like, am I being paid for this? Like, I'm no longer an employee of Rosetta Stone. And he's like, no. He's like, but you, could you just help me? And I was just like, I helped him for a little while, and then I was like, I got I to gotta go. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, no, you, you don't have to work for free. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. But I also, I, I mean, <laughs> I certainly wasn't working and Damn. still getting paid. Um, in addition to the texting me photos of me on my phone, that was the boss who uh, found me tweeting about the workplace. Oh, yeah. Where uh, I just, I clogged the toilet and uh, I, cl- I clogged the toilet super bad, like horribly. It was so clogged. And I was like looking around, I was opening cabinets and everything. And there was no plunger, mm-hmm. there was no brush, there was no, there was nothing. And I was like mortified because I was like, fuck, I have to like, like, wh- what am I going to do? I'm just, I, I'm going to tell everyone that I clogged the toilet and like make them like find a plunge. So I was just like, well, I mean, I guess other dudes work. I guess I can just deny it was me. <laughs> and then I tweeted like, if, if you don't have the plunger right next to the toilet, you deserve for me to clog it. And like, I don't know. It was funnier oh than that. Oh my God. But I tweeted basically a confession. And then, uh. That was the day that I learned that for months, everyone at my work had found my Twitter and had been, like, reading it and discussing it amongst themselves. Dude, that's my worst nightmare. Yeah. (laughs) Although I don't tweet anymore. Well, I don't tweet about work anymore. Like, at this point, like, if someone wants to find me tweeting about, like, whatever the fuck I tweet about, that's fine. I just, I don't tweet anything relevant to the workplace anymore. But... Yeah, so everyone had been doing that for months, and no one told me. And then just like, uh, just this this girl came up to me, and she just she just walked up to me, and she said, "You need to change your your Twitter name." And I was like, "What?" Oh my and she's God. like, "That's all I'm gonna say is uh, it's really easy to find, and you need to change it." And I was like, "What? No, tell me what's happening, <laughs> <laughs> dude." There's no- what does this mean? <laughs> there's nothing worse than when someone comes up to you. And and reveals to you that they have so much information. Yeah, it reveals just enough for you to oh completely my. spiral, but not enough that it's like helpful and in you, any way. And you realize that you've just been like living in a prison. Yeah, and then like so the so then I get called into my boss's office, and uh, he's just like very uncomfortable. And we go through, like, a whole meeting about something else. And then at the very end of the meeting, I'm like, I think I got away with this. The very end of the meeting, he just reaches under his desk and pulls out, like, a Target bag with a plunger and a brush in it. Oh, my God. And, like, puts it on the desk, and he's like, so do we need to say anything more? Oh, my God. (laughs) And I'm like, "Uh, no. And he's like, (laughs) oh, my fucking God. And then, like, an email went out. An email went out. A company-wide email. I am so, <laughs> so uncomfortable. <laughs> a com- a damn company-wide email went out stating that, like, branch <laughs> policy had been amended that now <laughs> a plunger needs to be next to the... So, like, wait, this was affects... This, was this at a bank? Yes. 
Oh my god, that makes it even worse. This is yeah. like a real job. Yeah. So I clogged the toilet so bad. Oh my. That like fuck. 14 branches <laughs> spread out across Pennsylvania and Ohio all had to go out and like sh- buy supplies and like for policy for like all this to happen. That means that like I shat in a toilet so badly and then, like, incriminated myself on the internet that just, like, <laughs> nice mis- Midwestern ladies had to sit at a conference room and I don't... I can only ima- I can only say worst-case so scenario. so bad. So worst-case scenario, just, like, nice Ohio ladies are sitting at a conference table in Ohio reading printed-out copies of my tweets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my... God. Dude, this is... That's, like, the butterfly effect. Yeah. You take a shit so heinous... That it affects hundreds of lives. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, I guess they just, like, weren't good at computers. Because then I just, like, set my Twitter to private, like, changed the username. And then, like, nothing happened. But I think that's what Christy was warning about when she's like, you need to change. I think I was going to get, like, in trouble for, like, tweeting about shitting in the toilet at work. Dude, that made me so uncomfortable. (laughs) But then I just, like, like, nobody understands computers at, like, a fucking Ohio credit union. So then I just, (laughs) I just change it on. They're like, fuck, where to go? All the evidence. <laughs> I, I want to. Every time we do these stories, like I feel like mine are kind of funny, and then yours always chill me to the bone. <laughs> yours, yours, yours. Oh, my life is bad. A really visceral level. I really got to improve my life. Oh my god, dude! <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. And then I mean that happened like six months into working there, and I worked there for like two years. So then just like that just colored my. My whole experience. You worked there for another year and a half after yeah. that? Oh, Brendan, no, you, you quit. You go work somewhere else. I should have quit. <clears throat> Why didn't you quit? I don't know. What were you making hourly? Uh, I think it was like 14, something like you that. You could have got a way in, in, in equivalent job with less responsibility. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it was the most I had been making up till that point. I guess that's true. How old were you? It was like two years ago. So I was oh, okay. 24. Yeah. 25? That's like. good. Yeah. It's not that bad. No, it's not bad at all. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to neg you about the job that you had two years ago. Yeah. I didn't make enough money two years ago. No, I'm not saying no, I'm not saying you didn't make respect. enough money. I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying like if you were making I would understand staying through that if you were making like twenty dollars an hour at twenty four. Like mm-hmm. that's but like fourteen, it's like you can go be a bus boy. Yeah, you can I don't think you could make fourteen an hour being of a course bus you boy. Can. Absolutely you can make more than that. Really? Yeah, dude. If you were if you're like a busboy at a breakfast place. Yeah, but I mean then you have to not go to open mics every night. No, no. Breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The the the, the move is being a busboy during breakfast and lunch hours. You make a lot of money. That makes sense. Yeah. Huh. Maybe I'll do that when I fuck up this job. Just don't be don't shit. I've toilet. been so because you know how you let me tell you something. You know here's how, the thing is <clears throat> the bank I worked at before that, Wells Fargo, I also caused a big bathroom incident. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my ass. What do you eat? You see what I eat. It's it's trash, but I think it's more that it all comes out sludge and uh I have to use so much toilet paper to get clean. I have to really? wipe so many do you times. Think that this is, do you think this is from being an alcoholic, maybe somehow, or like? I think it's just I drink I a know. lot of coffee. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. drink any coffee ever. I drink like three or four cups a day. I so I think that's caffeine. it. You gotta cut. That and out. this was back when I was smoking too. So that uh, co- coffee and cigarettes, you're just exploding out of your asshole at all times. That is the one thing I wish the Jim Jarmusch film portrayed that. I wish there was yeah. a scene. I wish we checked. <laughs> I wish we checked back in with all the characters shitting in a bathroom stall, <laughs> just over the credits. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, yes, they come up like bloopers and like fucking Anchorman or something. Yeah. We just see it's either all the characters or it's just Bill Murray shitting just over Bill the Murray. entire credits. No, I would love to see like the RZA just like hunched over, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like a, a loud beat playing as yeah. he just like <laughs> rocks back and forth on the toilet. Well, that I don't know if Jim Jarmusch would do all that. Ah, <laughs> eh, well, <laughs> he's understated, Brendan. Yeah, well, you know, I'm the director now, so. Okay. Well, that's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you were talking about your shits. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, that happened at Wells Fargo also, is I, I shit and caused an email to go out. There's always an email. I know that. Um, this is crazy. <laughs> Do you know how easy it is when you when you clog a toilet to just like discreetly be like uh, just pop out like hey I use too much toilet paper can I like have a plunger? do they not have plungers in 
They should have plungers in these places. They should have plungers. They in these don't places. have. Well, that was part the of the bank. thing. That was part of the thing. <laughs> is like at uh, at the Philly place, there was no plunger. Oh my! There God. just like was not a plunger in the branch. But not at Wells Fargo. No, not that either. And that it was like an old old building, um, and uh, you know old pipes, and you know I. I Fuck that toilet. It wasn't, was bad. It wasn't it reinforced for for the storm that was coming. Yeah, for the storm that was coming. You know, I'm a I'm a powerful Fucking man. Hurricane I, Brendan. Yeah, I, I, it's a storm when I shit. They it all have been blasts out of my damn asshole. This is insane. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, at this branch, or at this place that I'm working, I'm a lot more careful. You know, I'll flush halfway through. Sometimes I'll shit, and then I'll look at the shit, and I'll be like. I'm going to flush before I even put any toilet paper in there because that's so much shit, even on its own. It could... It's funny because the anxiety of two flushes, before, like, before you clog a toilet, you're like, if people hear me flushing twice, that's embarrassing. That, go, yeah, yeah, that's also embarrassing. But, but, the, but it, the true adulthood is realizing that two flushes is better than a clogged toilet. It's true. <laughs> yeah, but your pride tells you. <laughs> it is. It's because you, dude, your it is vanity. Pride. <laughs> You it's, think it's, you think I could risk it all and this could work out? It is one hundred percent vanity and pride. Mm-hmm. And then you don't do that flush, and suddenly you're Icarus with melted wings, dude. Yeah. And then uh, you know, so so I'm being very measured with the toilet paper, very measured to the point that uh, more than once I have not used enough toilet paper out of fear that I, I've, I'm using too much, and uh, like like not you. I don't mean not use enough, like, in the sense that I'm not clean at the end of it. Just, like, for one individual swipe, it's not enough toilet paper. And then I just look down, and there's just, like, shit on my hand. And I'm like, ah, fuck. Oh, my God. And then I have to, like, ver- be very, ca- I, you know, wipe it off dry. <laughs> then be so careful pulling up my pants, doing my belt, because I don't want to touch my pants with the part of my hand that touch shit. <laughs> and then I have to go out to the bathroom, hope that there's no one else in the bathroom who sees me just walk out of the stall with, like, a shit hand. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! <laughs> um, this is this is like <laughs> I am shook. <laughs> I am, I, this is I really need to improve every little detail about my life. That's such a high tension story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now it's a it's a heist. Oh my god! I have to listen, see if anyone is 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 in the bathroom. You, you know. That's the thing. You get caught. With the, it's with weird. a shit hand. It's kind of like we were talking about in the chat. How like the main theme of No Country for Old Men is like the things you can't account for. Like you're <laughs> Anton Shiger, you think you're in the clear. <laughs> you're just like, all I gotta do, I just gotta wash the shit off my hand, and suddenly a fucking car hits you. <laughs> and, but it's just, <laughs> but it's just your, fe- not your female. It's just your male coworker coming in and seeing that you've got like a, just like it's just the heel of my palm, <laughs> right? It, just like a small streak. Oh, okay. It's not like I'm walking out with like a a I, mud covered entire hand. I was imagining like a, like, like a shark fin on the side of your hand, just like a little fin of shit. Or you know that too. You know that could happen. I think that's happened before. But you got to get that under the water quick, dude. Mm-hmm. You got to. But then it's in this. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. right. That's a because like in reality, it might only take you like a grand total of what like six seconds to get that down in the drink, like totally gone. But that's a that's a window for people to come in and be like, that's what? a high tension. What window. are you doing? Yeah, I'm like ah. Uh, Oh, uh, you know, you want to hear? We're almost done, but you want to hear my worst, the the most shameful shit story that I have. Take as long as you need to of tell all the it. many. Um, it's just I. It was a night after hard drinking. Mm-hmm. I wake up. I'm nude, and uh, so I'm I'm just on a bare mattress, you know, because yeah. you don't when you're, you're an alcoholic, you don't have sheets on your bed. Right. For who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm just I'm laying in this mattress that I've sweat completely through, and I I can feel like. I have a lot of gas and it's painful, uh-huh. but I also, I don't want to get up cause I have a headache oh my God. and I know <laughs> it's, it's not as bad as you think, but it is bad. I know where it's going. So I think like, Ooh, maybe if I roll over onto my side, that will alleviate the pressure. So I roll over to my side and it helps a little, but still I'm like, like, I don't want to open my eyes. The sun's coming through the window. I'm like, fuck. I, I, I don't want to have to go shit. I think this is just farts. I think this is going to be fine. So I'm laying there, and I decide I'm gonna fart. It's gonna be fine. So I, <laughs> it's gonna be and it's okay. like a careful fart, you know. So I, I like manually with my hands, I'm like spreading my ass, <laughs> and I'm trying. I'm just laying there on my side, <laughs> on the side of the bed, ass pointed off the bed, <laughs> <laughs> and I go, <laughs> I go to fart, and I just diarrhea, off, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I shoot it out just like you know like those little like trick fountains like in a square where it's just like shooting like just like whoop, and yep. it shoots like one little stream through the air real quick I just like just a small amount of diarrhea like it doesn't touch my bed at all I just shit off the side of the bed oh my God. and I'm so hungover that I'm just like I'll fix this later. <laughs> and I just went back to sleep for like many hours. Oh my God, dude. The way you, that story, the way you tell that story, it's like Alfred Hitchcock where it's like, <laughs> it's like you show me the bomb under the table. I'm like, I know where this is going. <laughs> it has to go off. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, no, I'd rather have people think that I was racist than in all this. <laughs> all right. That's our time. That's why I own these streets. Straight up portfolio showing growth, fuck a pay cut. Yeah, you know I stay slut. Catch me in the spot, looping up for the self suck. Oh fuck, I busted already. I'm coming bucket so heavy. My dream of cream coming steady. Now my mouth open, I'm ready. I'm talking solo heavy petting on a Friday night. That talking bashing the bishop more like that tugging delight. I'm taking all the time I need to do.